welcome. Thank you for being together with us. Uh, today is another big day for GREM, the Gynecological and Reproductive Endocrinology and Metabolism, our new journal from the International Society of Gynecological Endocrinology. As uh, we have already established uh, since some time, we will present uh, every month one of our author. And today I have the pleasure and joy to introduce you that paper, a discussion on endometriosis related infertility, does surgery improve IVF outcomes, a single center observational retrospective analysis. And this study is done by Vito Cella. And uh, Vito Cella is professor of obstetrics and gynecology. He works, uh, we, he was working with me since many years, he's now at the University of Pisa. He's chairing the center of uh, endometriosis and also is uh, strongly recognized all over the world as a very brave laparoscopist and very great expert in robotic surgery. Uh, Professor Vito Cella is author of several group of papers on different area of women fertility, surgery, advanced surgery, and uh, is now today presenting his experience on that uh, fantastic chapter, which is endometriosis and mostly endometriosis consequence and complication related to fertility. Vito, you have the microphone. We will have the general discussion at the end. Please uh, rise, rise in the question and answer, raise your question. I will read it and then Vito Cella will answer. Thank you very much. Vito, you have the microphone. Thank you, Professor Ginazzani, for the invitation. Thank you, Graham. It's a big honor to be with you and discuss our paper, our work. Uh, so uh, I want to, first of all, uh, thank uh, Maria Elena Obino that wrote with us the paper as the, one of the principal investigators. So uh, uh, our, uh, we, we, we talk about uh, endometriosis, endometriosis related to infertility. So uh, we, we, we talk about endometriosis and infertility. Uh, is uh, uh, still endometriosis and infertility is still a matter of debate. And people, there are people that say that uh, the relation with endometriosis and infertility is, is still controversial. Uh, what we know that um, a lot of patients between 25 and 50% of the infertile woman has in infertility. And also that the uh, infertile patient with uh, an untreated mild endometriosis spontan has, have a spontaneous pregnancy between two and 4.5%. Infertile patient with moderate and severe endometriosis has a spontaneous pregnancy less than two percent, which are the mechanism. Uh, there are a lot of mechanisms. This is why also uh, the uh, matter is still difficult to understand. Uh, also, the guideline is not really clear uh, about uh, endometriosis and infertility, but which is the, the mechanism of uh, infertility uh, related to endometriosis? It could be a uh, distortion, uh, distortion of uh, pelvic anatomy, a uh, peritoneal flu fluid uh, impaired, anomaly of tubal function, alteration of hormonal and cell mediated mechanism, anom endocrine anomaly or ovulatory dysfunction, impairment of the implant, impairment of the oocyte quality and embryo quality, which is, which is the management. So we know there are different phenotype of a patient, the infertile, they has endometriosis. We have a patient with superficial endometriosis. We are patient with only with the endometrioma. We have patient with deep endometriosis, and we have patient with deep plus uh, endometrioma. And uh, in the management, is important to see if the patient are symptomatic or not, which is the age of the patient, which is the uh, ovarian reserve, if there are associated factors of infertility as PCO, adenomyosis, and so on. If the patient has, has been pre uh, previous surgery or which is the size of the lesion. And important, which is the time where uh, 
at which time we recognize that the patient has endometriosis. This is the report in 2016 uh, with, with the PME Italian register of uh, IVF. And you can see here that the patient with endometriosis is 4.5%. Uh, 4 there are many papers. Papers that say that surgery is better than IVF. Other papers that say the IVF is better than surgery. How we say before is method, the matter is still not clear. And also, uh, what we know that after surgery, after laparoscopy, we can have a spontaneous pregnancy. And you can see this is a paper wrote from Kocha in 2008. It's interesting to see how the pregnancy days is spontaneous pregnancy days after surgery is correlated to the age of the patient. Uh, uh, blue line is more than 35, a uh, green line is less than 35, uh, is correlated to the stage of endometriosis. Blue line is one, uh, stage one, stage two, uh, red line is stage three and stage four. Also, when we talk about deep endometriosis, we know that, uh, we know that the surgery uh, can in, in, in can make spontaneous pregnancy faster than expectant management. And this is important because if we do surgery, maybe we can reach. Uh, also, if at the end the, uh, there is no difference in the, uh, there is no modification on the, the, reprodu the rep reproductive prognosis, but when we do surgery, we have faster pregnancy, spontaneous pregnancy. So surgery or IVF, we have to know, and this is important, the counseling of the patient, which are the risk of the uh, surgery and which are the risk of the IVF, which are the risk of surgery, it depends on the surgical skill, cost, surgical complication, impact of the ovarian reserve and risk of premature ovarian failure, incomplete surgery and recurrence, may delay ART or which are the risk of IVF prior surgery, progression of the disease, increase of inflammatory reaction, difficulty of cycle retrieval, risk of cycle cancellation, follicular fluid contamination, endometrioma infection, and dianosis uh, occult malignancy, risk of rupture of the end peritonids, pregnancy related complication. We say also the guidelines are not clear because they don't say we have to do so, we have to do so. If, uh, for instance, we have to share guidelines for endometrioma and guidelines for deep endometriosis. Guidelines for the endometrioma, this is evidence A, they say that the endometrioma la larger than three centimeters, there is no evidence that cystectomy pr uh, prior the treatment of ART improve pregnancy. What is important? is that the, we have uh, considered cystectomy in endometrioma larger than three centimeters if uh, improved pain is uh, accessible of the follicle and recommend to counsel it. We have to, to, to say to the patient then we do surgery, but maybe after we have a decrease in ovarian function. If we talk about the deep endometriosis, we know that the effectiveness of surgical incision of deep nodular lesion before treatment with assisted reproductive technology in women with endometriosis associated infertility is not well established with regard to reproductive outcome. So also the guideline in deep endometriosis, they don't say you have to remove or not. So the object of our study was determine the impact of endometriosis surgery on the result of ART, determine the impact of surgery of different endometriosis phenotype on the ART result, and determine the impact of surgery after failing IVF on the result of ART. It's a retrospective study, observational and monocenter from January 2011, December 2008. The inclusion criteria was infected patient with endometriosis, age 18, 43, indication for IVF. Exclusion criteria was other anomaly, other uh, uh, female infertility factor, endocrinopathy or other comorbidity, severe male factor infertility. 
So all the patients went to, we, we, we make a history, complete clinical history and comorbidity, duration of fertility, previous surgery. We make diagnostic ex examination like complete biochemical serological test, genetic counseling, breast ultrasound, hormonal profile evaluation, TV ultrasound, diagnostic hysteroscopy, a seminal fluid capacity test. Which parameter we study? Age, body mass index, ovarian reserve, that means FSH, AMH, AFC, surgery, non surgery, site of endometriosis, and site of surgery. And the result was the average number of site collected, mature of site, fertilized of site, embryo transferred, good quality embryo. Sorry, something happened. And uh, in pregnancy rate by cycle and the transfer the patient, percentage of implant rate of miscarriage and live birth by cycle at the end patient. Study, we have uh, four phenotype of patient. You will see, we exclude the patient with superficial endometriosis. At the end, we, we look at 106 patient for 177 cycle and 22 patients, that means 46 cycles were excluded because they were superficial endometriosis with male infertility or endometrioma with male infertility or other fertility factor. We include at the end of the study 78 patients under 31 cycle. And for phenotype, OMA patient, endometrioma, endometrioma plus surgery, deep endometriosis plus OMA patient, deep endometriosis plus OMA patient with surgery. So for phenotype. Those are in table one, we have the characteristic of the patient and the ART outcome in general population. Age around 36, 35, BMI around 21st, uh, patient with endometrioma 36, patient with the deep endometriosis endometrioma 42. That was a variant reserve, 8.2, and AMH 2.7 uh, plus or less 2.3, uh, antral, uh, antral folic count was 10 plus, plus uh, less 5. The patient we have uh, one cycle, uh, I don't see because I have uh, 37 patients, two cycles, 30 patients, three cycles, 10, one, four cycles, one patient. We had 107 embryo transfer. The cancellation rate was 18. The clinical pregnancy rate 25. The clinical pregnancy rate per embryo transfer 30. The pregnancy rate for patient 42. The implantation rate 15. Miscarrier rate 30%. Live birth for cycle 18. Live birth for embryo transfer 22. Live birth for patient 30. Something up, sorry. Okay. Uh, this is the clinical characteristic of ovarian reserve in different phenotype of endometriosis. You see OMA, OMA plus surgery, uh, deep endometriosis, plus OMA, deep endometriosis plus surgery. What we see in this patient, that there is not really different in between the patient. Uh, the only, we can see that there is a small difference, not significant, in between AMH in the patient they had surgery with endometrioma and with deep endometriosis with endometrioma. But it's not really 1.87, 1.84, but it's not significant. In table three, there is IRT outcome in different phenotype related to the surgery. What we see in this patient that is not significant, but we see that the patient with surgery has less retrieved oocyte with DOMA surgery, and uh, also the patient with the deep endometriosis surgery in comparison with the patient that had uh, only IVF, but it's not significant. The other thing is important to see that the patient with HOMA surgery, that we, we use more gonadotropin in comparison with the patient that had no surgery. This is the uh, reproductive out outcome uh, between patient with uh, OMA and patient with OMA surgery. And we see that there is a, the patient with the, uh, OMA surgery had the, uh, the really significant, uh, with the good quality of embryo and had a 
the, a bigger cancellation rate in comparison with patients that had no surgery. So what is, uh, and, and, and this is important because uh, it's, it's nice to see that the, at the end, there is no any difference between live for cycle, live for embryo transfer, live for patient. So patient with surgery has good quality of embryo rate and more cancellation rate. So why so probably the good quality of the patient of the embryo uh, mm, reduce the, 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 the um, is, is, is why we have the same rate of pregnancy at, at the end. Uh, same thing, this is a comparison ART outcome between patient with dye glucoma and a patient with previous dye with doma surgery. And this is amazing how different is the patient with surgery has better fertilization rate, better and, and metaphase to oocyte rate better good embryo quality, uh, uh, better clinical pregnancy rate, better clinical pregnancy rate for, uh, for embryo transfer, and also for patient, better implantation rate, and uh, less miscarriage rate in comparison with the patient with deep endometriosis that had no surgery. So that's, it, it, it's impressive how in this case, surgery, uh, increase the rate of uh, uh, all the all the all the data. If we analyze this is an univariate analysis the, uh, for uh, to compare pregnancy negative or positive with the prognostic factor, and we see that there is no difference uh, pregnancy negative and pregnancy positive in age, BMI, FSH, MIH, and anti counter follicle. There is no difference if the endometrioma is unilateral or bilateral in the pregnancy, positive or negative. Uh, there is no difference in this case in the phenotype, but if, if, if we want to see, it's not significant, but there is difference in patients that had surgery in comparison to the patient that we posit, they are not surgery in pregnancy positive uh, patient. So, but it's not significant. Different, but if we go to uh, see the prognostic factor and we share for phenotype positive and negative patient, we see that the patient they are so there is no difference between OMA, OMA plus surgery, and deep endometriosis with with surgery in the pregnancy positive or negative. There is a difference in patient with deep endometriosis plus endometrioma they have surgery. It does also, there is no other thing different in the protocol, agonist, antagonist. As you know, there is some paper that say if you use if you use if you agonist before they treat the IVF, there is uh, more uh, pregnancy in comparison with no treatment or antagonism in the patient with endometriosis, but we don't find any difference. The only difference that we find this is interesting is patient with the IVF. IVF failed, they went to surgery, is a significant positive, the pregnancy positive test. So, which, which are the limit of this study, the strength of this study? Is a retrospective, little sample, non-homogeneity in the pre-ART medical therapy, which, which is the strength. There are no other factor of infertility or comorbidity that can influence the paper. The sample is homogeneous, and the sample is performed in a single center. Uh, so we open the discussion and the conclusion at the paper. Uh, still, uh, the management of infertile patients with endometriosis is a matter of debate. Uh, we lack of really randomized clinical study, in particular for deep endometriosis. We are still. Uh, um, know which are the risk of surgery, the risk of uh, uh, IVF. We have to uh, understand that that is important when we treat the patient of an reserve age of the patient. It's important when we send the patient to surgery, which is the experience of the operator, uh, know when it, there is only endometrioma or when we talk about the deep endometriosis because there's really different know if the patient are symptomatic or not. 
of course, if they are not asymptomatic, there's no evidence of surgery in this case. And it's important the time factor. So at the end, I think, uh, yeah, of course, surgery can improve uh, RT, in, in RT technique and also the quality of life of the patient. I think maybe both the approach, the combined approach can be the best for our patient. So it's important you have a personalized strategic decision. So which is the personalized strategic decision for the endometrioma? In our paper, we know that operative patient has a lever, lower MHC level. There is a greater rate of cancel cycle for operate in comparison with non-operate patient. There is a lower number of site recovery for operate versus non-operate patient. There is a great dose of gonadotropin used for operate patient. There is a great good quality of the embryo for operate patient versus non-operate patient. But there is no difference in pregnancy between operate and non-operate patient. So, which is the flow chart? Maybe the flow chart then we 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 think is surgery could be for endometrioma, uh, for when it, there is suspicion of malignancy, when they, there are intense symptoms of poor quality of life, and it could be also space for fertility preservation, IVF, when a poor, we, we have a poor ovarian reserve, and this is, this is emergency, emergency IVF. We have to consider the age, we have to consider the previous surgery, or other factor of infertility. What about deep endometriosis, which is our the strategic decision? We know we have poor evidence in, of, of, about paper. We have inconclusive with the line because we are not the guidelines that say we have to do that or that. There are uh, often they are symptomatic patients. We know that the MH level are lower in the operative uh, versus non-operative patient. No different cancer cycle or site collected, transfer embryo, dose of gonadotropin in operative versus non operative patient, great rate of mature eggs, fertilization, good quality of embryo in operative versus non operative patient, great rate of pregnancy implantation in operative patient in comparison with no operative patient, lower rate of abortion in operative, and after a different IVF failure. Uh, success with surgery versus failure attempt. So we have to still a lot of paper. This is a, a nice paper uh, from infertility sterility talking about endometrioma. And there are people that say they are pro surgery. Always there are people that is very good and very expert in surgery, and people that are for IVF. And the, uh, the other are people that do IVF. Other paper, they're talking about, this is a, a Soriano paper in patient that have uh, IVF, a different, many IVF failure before surgery. And they claim that symptomatic women with severe endometriosis, a repeat IVF implantation failure, may, 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 may benefit from extensive lap, laparoscopy surgery for the uh, pregnancy rate and the life Bad rate. Same things with the patient with this paper called rectal endometriosis associated to infertility. Why should you before IVF or before uh, or before surgery? They conclude this is a balester uh, group. The first line surgery may be a good option for women with colorectal endometriosis associated infertility because these patients better pregnancy rate and life per day. You can see here the uh, pink, pink, we see the purple line is, or blue line is a surgery for a a ART, and the red line is the only patient with a ART. This is the cumulative life burden. And this is the cumulative pregnancy rate, purple line, and uh, only ART. Conclusion, endometrioma surgery does not offer an advantage in terms of increased pregnancy rate. Deep endometrial surgery appears to be beneficial in terms of fertilization rate, good quality embryo, implantation, and pregnancy rate. IVF, there is a group of patients that had before IVF failure, surgery appeared to be an advantage. So, which is at the end, the best co co conclusion is we have to personalize 
the strategic decision. It's important the counseling and share with the patient what we know. And also maybe what to suggest, which is the best center for surgery, the best center for IVF. And also we have to take care also because they take care also to preservation of fertility because it could be a good option. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Vito. We have now, you can close uh, your screen. Thank you, and then we will move to the question. We have already a series of questions. And uh, I would like to start uh, with one of them is from Fred Naftolin in uh, New York. He asked, what about the recurrence of uh, deep endometriosis? How does this relate to your results? Okay, we, we actually, uh, we, we, we look at the current of deep endometriosis and the recurrent of the, we have a recurrent endometriosis or deep endometriosis still uh, with surgery and also uh, with IVF. I think uh, people with IVF, uh, so with surgery with a certain number of patients that has uh, with recurrent endometriosis. Patient with have a surgery and after IVF, in comparison with patients that had only surgery, the recurrency of endometriosis is bigger. This is our evidence. They are, they, they are, we have a few cases, but there is a small evidence about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. There is another one from an anonymous. What are the indications for preservation of fertility in patients with endometriosis? Okay, this is a, an, an important issue, preservation of fertility in patients with endometriosis. Uh, I think uh, the main issue, the, the main indication in where, when we have a bilateral endometrioma and the patient, they have to go to surgery. Because uh, as you know, after surgery, sometimes we have a, 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 also, our data, we have a, a still decrease of MIH. We have a still decrease of the number of oocyte retrieval. Unfortunately, we, we, we have to know the good technique and sometimes also with the good technique, the, the ovary uh, is not come very well. So I think uh, the preservation of uh, f f fertility, mainly when our bilateral is a big, in, bilateral endometrioma is a big indication. Thank you. And then now we have a question from Gul Jahan Babajanova and Alexandra Gromova. There are two questions who are asking a possible combination of polycystic ovary and endometriosis. Which is the combination? Now, if you had, uh, if you had a combination of polycystic ovary and endometriosis. Yes, we have some patients with a combination. And uh, this patient, usually we, uh, we treat uh, this patient with uh, uh, protocol with antagonist because if there is a risk of uh, hyperstimulation, we can leave, uh, we can give agonist for the, for, the, for the protocol. So I think we have a combination uh, very often. I think it is very often. Thank you. And also another one, this also is from an anonymous. We have several anonymous. Is there any indication of medical therapy before HRT in patients with endometriosis? Okay. The, uh, one of uh, the, the, the limit of uh, our study, how we see before, and then no all the patients, many patients are under medical therapy before IVF. Other patients not. So we should uh, share about it this patient because we, we, we use uh, keep the patient with symptom before IVF under pro progesting. And after we perform endometriosis and we, we perform IVF. So no, not all patients are treated with, with endometriosis. That, that's the, the, only, uh, the, the only issue because we use uh, um, pro progesting is not why? Because we increase the pregnancy rate. There is not any relation about that. But with progesterone, we decrease the endometrioma. And in one, two, or three months, after we can go to uh, retrieval with uh, um, less bigger endometrioma than uh, normal, normal patient with endometrioma. So we reduce the size of the endometrioma. 
Yes. And there is also a question which is going absolutely in that line from Mangalore da Modarchini. If there is endometrioma, what is the best outcome? Aspirate on do ICSI or laparoscopic removal and ICSI? Can you say again, please? If there is an endometrioma, I think of big size, what is the best outcome? Aspirate and do assisted reproductive technology or laparoscopic removal and assisted reproductive technology? Okay, this is another question, very, very, so big endometrioma is a problem. In the sense, we, we use two-step procedure. So first of all, we, uh, we, we don't remove the endometrioma, but we they aspirate with laparoscopy the endometrioma, we reduce the endometrioma, we give analog for three months or progestin, and after we do IVF. And after the IVF, we remove the endometrioma. Now there is a new technique. Again, the, there is the treatment with laser, but unfortunately we are not the, the laser. So we could treat at the first step, we could treat, so it could be in the same time treatment and, uh, and, uh, and uh, in, we could treat the, the cyst with the laser and after do IVF. In, at this time, we could, uh, we could do the two step in the same laparoscopy. Yes, and then now another one, you have plenty of questions. Eh? This is from Najee Elahi. How much time lapse between surgery and ART? And do you use agonist or antagonist before that, uh, which one more uses than success? Okay. Uh, you, you, usually, we, if we don't remove the cyst, we use three mount or an, uh, an agonist, and after we do IVF, or we 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 put patient in three months of uh, uh, progestin, and after we do IVF. If we remove the cyst, the, the month after we perform IVF. So what about the difference in between agonist and antagonist? Uh, the, uh, as we know, there is a paper that was published a long time ago. This is a, a randomized trial, and they claim that the use of three months before IVF of antagonists, they have better result in the IVF in comparison of not use agonists. Unfortunately, it's the only paper that was published, and no other paper was published uh, after that, I think it's more than 20 years than we, we this paper remain really something that everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Vito. And, and then another one, this is from Neda Smijan Severinsky. What is the risk of complication in IVF cycle after surgery? After surgery? Yes. Uh, I think. Is, is, is the same complication the normal IVF. Sometime after surgery, the ovary, uh, there's not any complication if we remove deep endometriosis. It's better. It's better because you remove the nodule, everything is more free, and so on. What about the uh, en endometrioma? Sometimes the endometrioma develop adhesion and the ovaries become very far from the needle. So this is the only complication that can have, we, we can have after surgery. Thank you. And then one is from Jose Luis Neiro from Bilbao, a nice friend of us. And this, uh, what is the current position that remain for Danazol in the management of the quality of life of the patient with chronic pain due to endometriosis? It's a good position. I love that Danazol. The problem uh, with, with Danazol is sometimes if the, the patient are infertile and they want uh, and they want uh, pregnancy, uh, Danazol we we cannot use the, the Danazol before. So, but I think for chronic pelvic pain, Danazol is one of the chances that we have to treat endometriosis. Thank you very much. And there's another now another after the surgical treatment of deep endometriosis. If the patient has tubal patency, do you leave time for a spontaneous pregnancy or is the patient immediately inserted into an ART program? 
Of course, it depending to the age of the patient, of the age of the patient, is depending of the uh, ovarian reserve. But still, you, you know, they are peppered. I show you before the pepper or virtuline and the pepper of, from Kocha. Then they have spontaneous pregnancy after surgery. So I think at least in a younger patient with normal uh, ovarian reserve, at least six months uh, to, to try free before IVF. Thank you. And then now an interesting question from Tanya Rohacci. Uh, she asked, thank, she, thank you for the comprehensive lecture. And the question is, do you do IVF or ICSI in these cases of endometriosis? So is it ICSI for all irrespective of male factor? IVF or ICSI? Of course, uh, of course. Okay, this is the, the uh, it depends to the, the IVF center. There are some IVF centers they make the ICSI all patients not depending to male factor. There are some centers that may, uh, they make ICSI only for patients that need ICSI. So usually our center use IVF for this patient and only if there is male factor or if there is failed fertilization before, we perform ICSI. Thank you. And then another one, going to the technology. What is the best surgical technique for removing endometriomas? I think uh, 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 until until maybe one year uh, until until last year maybe the best technique was stripping. So now more and more we have uh, uh, the report that uh, the the use of laser uh, from destroy the capsule maybe can give us better result because it's like, it's less invasive than the stripping te technique. Thank you very much. And then and one now, we have one question from Fernando Avila, which is and another from an anonymous. I link them together. Eh? Fernando Avila asks, what is the role of aromatase inhibitors in deep endometriosis? And the other is, so what are the ovulation induction protocol in patients with endometriosis? Okay. So uh, in, in Italy, we cannot use a Roman inhibitor for endometriosis because there, was, there is no indication for that. Also, if if, if could be a, a treatment of uh, endometriosis, but uh, and, and this is so uh, I don't use a Roman inhibitor. I use only a Roman inhibitor for uh, uh, ovarian uh, oocyte preservation in patient in, in, in the protocol with in patient with. Uh, uh, breast cancer. So this is the only indication that we have in Italy. Uh, other way, we chart the protocol. It's a normal protocol. Usually we use protocol with uh, um, uh, gonadotropin, recombinant or not, and with antagonist. And we only different uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the trigger of ovulation. If we have a PCO patient, we, we use an analog of GNRH. If it's not, we use normal. Thank you. And then yeah. one question from Manjo Navani, which uh, um, is it, describing a patient age 31 with stage two endometriosis, three previous IVF cycle, good quality of embryos, no success, possibly implantation failure. Will you recommend Clexan heparin and progesterone support us, uh, and she have an anti-mullerian hormone of 20, then a good one. I think there is no indication for heparin. There is indication for progesterone support, but we support all the patients they do IVF. Also because probably the ovary then with the patient with endometriosis, they need the support because uh, sometimes, you know, they are, uh, the ovary, the endocrine, the, the, the progesterone, the ovulatory functions not very good. And then now another uh, question from Alexandra Gromova. She asks, it is uh, useful for pregnancy rate to remove with per peritoneomectomy or coagulation superficial peritoneal endometriosis? Of course, it's good. Uh, it's, a, it's an indication also, it's one of the uh, few indications of the guideline of the ASHRAE. If you have a, a superficial endometriosis, is 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 an indication to remove all the endometriosis because they are uh, you reach more spontaneous pregnancy rate. 
And then, and then Vito, I would like to ask you, we have now no more questions, but I would like to have uh, your comment. You are chairing that uh, endometriosis center and you are responsible of the IVF center of the University of Pisa, you have a very long experience. Then your suggestion in patient with endometriosis, what do we, in when do you found young patient with endometriosis, in young patient, what is your suggestion for, uh, for fertility prevention, for infertility prevention in these patients. Okay, this is, a, 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 I think the, the, the suggestion is, first of all, we have to treat the patient, I think with progestin, this is very important, and treat the patient also for a long time. Uh, second, I think a patient with endometrioma, we have to think then also if you have one endometrioma in one side, maybe in two years they, could have another endometrioma in the other side. We have to uh, serious uh, counseling the patient and uh, maybe suggesting uh, at the patient if there is also deep endometriosis or you see adenomyosis or you see other signs of endometriosis, they can uh, think, uh, can, can uh, give your the idea that the endometriosis can increase in the time, you suggest to buy uh, fertility preservation with, oocyte pre with the oocyte preservation. I think this, this, this is a, uh, how I suggest to the patient with the endometriosis, with the endometriosis, then uh, young patient, they can uh, ask to me what I could do with this endometriosis. Thanks. Also, you know, in, in, in my country, in my region, um, there is a regional law that uh, we are very, very, we have the, the chance that give everything for free at the patient with endometriosis, with moderate endometriosis, a severe endometriosis, we give for free uh, ovarian preservation. Then, and as I remember, it was a paper published from uh, Paolo Artini, Giovanni Paolo Artini, one of your co authors, that he was mentioning that uh, probably endometriosis. Uh, is uh, by itself uh, damaging uh, the oocyte. Do you have this impression in your experience? Yeah, of course. If, if you see also our results say that after surgery, there is a good uh, embryo in comparison with, with, with the patient, they don't do, they don't do surgery. That means in one way that probably when we remove the all peritoneal cytokine, all the, 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 the implant, all the endometriosis <laughs> inside, also the oocyte, can become better. And then it's a question now from Manjo Navani. With repeat IVF failure with endometriosis, will you suggest pre-implantation genetic diagnosis? I don't think so. Yeah, it could be, I mean, if, if the cause could be endometriosis, we do surgery for endometriosis. If we already treat an endometriosis with surgery, we remove all the endometriosis and uh, the, still we have IVF failure, maybe PGD could be a good solution. And then also from Alexandra Gromova, do you use a progesterone support at the period for expecting spontaneous pregnancy after surgery deep endometriosis? Of course, of course, yes. Okay. Thank you. And on the now question are moving. Uh, okay, do you routinely, this is from Anna Carolina Cavalcanti, uh, she asked, do you routinely remove the tubes in deep endometriosis surgery prior to IVF? Oh, there is a study from Soriano that I showed before where he removed all the, all the tube and he claimed that um, women with, where we remove the tube has more pregnancy rate in comparison with the other, they do IVF. But if I remove the tube, I mean, I cannot give the chance of a uh, spontaneous Amen. pregnancy. So I remove the tube only after, only if the tube is, uh, is involved in the endometriosis. And also I think we have several, several uh, papers that say we have a spontaneous pregnancy after surgery. So probably also the tube that seem to be uh, in, involved in the endometriosis. When we remove the cytokine, the peritoneal uh, implant, etc., all the inflammatory, they become normal. So I think uh, I discuss, uh, but I, I will not. 
Thank you. <laughs> and then it's uh, Manjo Navani, she's asking, do you recommend two embryo transfer instead of one with repeat IVF failures in endometriosis? Yes, could be, it's better. And then also uh, one from uh, Mangalore da Modarchini, is there any role for oocyte, you have already mentioned, for oocyte cryopreservation to keep the fertility? Yes, of course, it's a big role. I think uh, I suggest we we were talking about before patient young patient yeah. and a patient with a bilateral more bilateral endometrioma is is I suggest that this patient no one in preservation. Okay, then perfect. Thank you, Vito. Thank you. I would like to, to ask you to make a final comment. You know, we are still more than two hundred and ten present still at the end, and then we are rising until the end. Do you have any special? Uh, uh, your, your your final believings about how to face endometri how to link endometriosis treatment, fertility, and uh, uh, medical therapy with surgical therapy. You're as a, an expert. Yeah, I think I think uh, I'm in endometriosis is a very difficult disease, and uh, they are the, the multifactorial. Uh, is a, a multifactorial and uh, it's not uh, really easy to treat. The only thing is it's not the same thing for every patient, but we have to, every patient have, has the uh, real therapy, medical or IVF, and it's a different from another patient. So we have to treat uh, all the patient differently. We have to know the disease of each patient and treat the patient as endometriosis say. Thank you, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be with you. And this is uh, for all the people, this is an example of how the GREM, Gynecologic and Reproductive Endocrinology and Metabolism, publishing the paper of its author and linking the author to the possible general discussion, how this potentiated the general knowledge, the women health care, and how this is also a satisfaction for the author and for the publisher. Thank you very much to all thank of you. Vito, thank you. Enjoy thank you, the Professor life. Gina. Thank you, Professor Ginazzani. Thank you, Graham people. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Ciao. you. At the next time, we will meet again in July. You will receive information, date, and author name. Goodbye thank to you. all of you. And thank you for the questions. <laughs>